So the image at first was that of a rather quaint little car pottering along fairly slowly, looking rather high and narrow. But that image has been changing because a lot of people have seen them going very fast in rally cross and rallies. And now DAF have taken a big step forward with a new model, the 66. It's developed from the 55, but for one thing, it's got a completely restyled front end. The bonnet of the 55 did look a bit like a slice of Dutch cheese that had dropped on the car by accident, but the new bonnet is paired with the wings into a new full-width grill and a stainless steel bumper with rubber cushions on the edges. But apart from that, the car does look more solid on the road, and this is no accident. It's got more power, it's got a new, improved transmission, and it's got an entirely new rear end, which really does transform the road holding. It's not often that you can honestly say that a car has gained something specifically from racing and rallying, but the DAF has, because this new transmission was first developed for Formula 3 racing, and then it was built into the cars which were going on rallycross events and which were very successful. And after the pounding it got in rallycross, it was then built into cars for the Eindhoven police, and they hammered it at the rate of a thousand miles a week in built-up areas. And in built-up areas, they've been getting a belt life of about 20,000 miles, which means at least 40,000 miles of anybody else's motoring. For the benefit of people who don't rem remember the program we did a few years ago about DAF and the bariomatic transmission, let's run through the, how it works briefly. The engine in the front transmits power to an automatic clutch to the shaft, which takes the power in here, Here's a simple gearbox which gives you forward and reverse according to the movement of that little lever in the car. And then here are the two belt drives. Now these are on pulleys which are formed by cones which move in and out, so varying the diameter over which the pulley runs, over which the belt runs. So you can start off as you do here below gear with a small pulley here and a big one there but as you speed up these move closer together the belt moves up here and goes down there so you have a big pulley here and a small one there for top gear well here's how it might look if you were underneath the car when the car is running on the road And what makes these cones move in and out? Well, basically two things. First, these centrifugal bob weights, which move them in and out as the speed varies. And secondly, a vacuum piston here, connected to a pipe here, which moves them according to the vacuum in the inlet manifold, which in turn depends on the position of the accelerator pedal. So on the new arrangement, these pulleys feed back into a central reduction gear, then to a conventional differential, and then the power goes out through these two universally jointed shafts to the wheel. And now here's the expensive feature which DAF alone have on a small car, and that is the De Dion axle, this tube across here, which keeps both the wheels parallel, moving up and down vertically, no matter what you do. Inside the car, there's one feature that's unique to DAF, and that is this little selector lever, just push it forward to go forward, pull it back to go back. Of course, there are only two pedals, brake and accelerator. The clutch is automatic. But there's one other thing. If you're going down a mountain, it naturally changes into top gear. But if you want to hold a low gear for engine braking, you just press that switch. Here's the hazard warning switch. There's the light switch. Dip and flash are on this side of the column. And the horn and indicators on this side. Heater controls in the middle and wipe and wash there. Now, on this super deluxe model, which is the one with the disc front brakes, you have adjustable backrests, and they all have this safety catch to hold the tip-up seats. In normal motoring, the new 66 is a big improvement. It's smoother, it's quieter, it's lively, and above all, it handles much better, especially when you're cornering very fast to the point where the tires are squealing, or when you're swerving to take some avoiding action. Now, it's very smooth and stable in this now, whereas the old one with its swing axles could be a bit of a handful. Now, the engine itself is 1100cc. It's specially made for DAF by Renault. This one meets all the latest European anti-pollution regulations, and at the same time, they've managed to get an extra two horsepower out of it. 
the alternator is new, and on this deluxe model, you have disc brakes at the front, drums at the rear, with a servo and two reservoirs and two separate fluid circuits, one for the front and one for the rear. Being relatively small, Duff have to get the maximum mileage they can out of one set of pressings, so they only make cars with two side doors. But out of these pressings, they get a saloon, a coupe, and a station wagon. Of course, the station wagon also has a lift-up rear door. And there's one thing that you don't see very often on station wagons, and that is a shelf in here which protects your luggage from the prying eyes of casual thieves. When you're loading it, you just hinge up the shelf like that and put it down, drop down the lid, and nobody knows what's here in the back. In its latest form, the DAF is a, is a big step forward. It's got all the advantages of the stepless, smooth, quiet, automatic belt drive transmission with much higher standards of road holding and a lively performance. They're now building DAFs at the rate of 100,000 a year, and at the present rate of progress, they could be selling anything from 25 to 30,000 a year in England by next year. So it's obviously a car which the big boys are going to have to take much more seriously in future.